Gentlemen, okay, so, uh, start just... your engine. Jason, I want to know your predictions, Jason, before you get, you know, you go to. Yo, what up, Matt? I'm sorry? Oh, I said, yo, what up, Matt? <laughs> oh, nothing. Just trying to work on a computer while I'm talking to you guys. Okay, okay. Well, yeah, they kind of they kind of baited me into this, but I agreed because I've seen you debate a few times, and I definitely, uh, definitely don't share your views. Um, they said that I, I wasn't clear about the topic. It was the existence of God or the agnosticism thing. Do you hold Darth's view on uh, agnosticism? I don't know what Darth's view is. Uh, well, there's a bunch... I guess you probably know these guys, like Darth and Jay Dyer and um, some of the other sort of internet precept guys. Yeah, I'm familiar with them, yeah. So a lot of them have this view that agnosticism is impossible. Are you, uh, are you on that? Uh, impossible in what way? <clears throat> logically impossible. Um, I'd have to get into that more to see i think it's certainly possible that people can be ignorant about the truth but ultimately there's no excuse for that ignorance okay well it sounds like you don't share their position so you think it is possible for someone to be agnostic of course it's possible for someone to be agnostic can they defend it rationally that's a different question okay well no i mean i guess we don't disagree on that front then well, defend rationally. Wait, so you think someone has to be irrational if they're agnostic? Well, I, I would hope that you wouldn't adopt uh, agnosticism out of ignorance and lazy fair uh, lack of thought. Um, you would hope that they wouldn't adopt agnosticism out have, of you, ignorance. Well, someone could just be agnostic because they just like they haven't formed a belief about something. You hold a pos you hold a position because of information because of something. You, when you have information given to you, you do something with it. You affirm, you deny, you withhold judgment. But whatever it is, uh, that's what happens with people. So if I tell you that I believe that there is a, an ice cream factory on the fourth largest moon of Jupiter, uh, that information is in your head, and I would assume that you deny that possibility. Or you might say, well, I'm not exactly sure if it's possible or not, because I don't know all things. I can't prove that it doesn't exist. So you could say, well, I'll, I'll be agnostic about it. But what, either way, you're drawing a conclusion based on information. That's what we do with information. Um, so that's the reason for your agnosticism. If there's no reason for your agnosticism, then why have a discussion about it? Well, it probably depends what you mean by reason. If you mean, like, justification, I don't know there has to be justification for it, right? Someone could just be... But if you mean a reason as in, like, a causal explanation, I would assume there's a causal explanation for someone being agnostic. But if you don't... You're agnostic, right? Depending what God we're talking about. Um, I'm only but... going to defend the Christian God, the tr Christian tri tri uh, Trinitarian God. So you say you're agnostic, so define what you mean by that. I don't have a belief that that God exists, um, and I don't have a belief that it's false that that God exists. So I don't my believe cat, P, I don't my cat, believe not P. My, my cat doesn't have a belief. In fact, the my phone in my left hand, which you can't see, doesn't have belief. So that's not any difference. You're not helping yourself yet. I don't understand. You just asked, um, <laughs> you just asked what I mean by agnostic, so I was just telling you what I mean. Yeah, and I took your definition and I applied it. It says, don't have belief. Oh, my phone also does not have belief, so it must be agnostic <clears throat> also. I'm not sure what the, uh, what the thrust of the criticism is supposed to be here. Your definition is insufficient. What's it mean for a definition to be insufficient? Just what you gave me as an example. You simply said, don't have belief. A rock in my yard doesn't have belief, so it must be agnostic also. I don't understand what the uh, I don't understand right, what the done. criticism is. We're done then. Okay, if you can't get that, then it's not going to be possible for us to have a rational dis discussion. I, I mean, I don't know what to say to that. You just want to stop talking. I said, if you can't understand the logic there, then we don't have any further. Uh, we don't have anywhere else to go. No, I don't. I don't understand what you're trying to tell me. Like, are you trying to say that I'm wrong about something? I'll try it one more time. 
Okay, if but you're playing a game. But, wait, then but before you continue to play. But wait, wait, wait. But just before oh, okay. you do it, you don't want me to talk. Okay, never mind then. Uh, I, well, I got well, another server I can go to if you want to just. Whoa, why are why are you having on. some crazy attitude? I'm not. One I'm sec. Not I want to. Wait, 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 wait. Well, wait, wait. You, you get to cut one me off. Time. Well, <laughs> before just... you before you do it though, I'm just trying to clarify so that you don't say something, then get frustrated at my reaction, right? So I just want to understand. You you know you're free to say whatever you want to say, but I just want to understand. Are you trying to tell me that I'm wrong about something? Sorry, am I coming through? Whoa, did he leave? Yeah. What? Wow. <laughs> okay. Um, I mean, was that an unreasonable thing to ask? I don't get it. Uh, you wanna you wanna get him back in here? Like I'll wait yeah, around for a minute. In the meantime, I guess you can answer questions uh, from spectators. Uh, well, ju anyone... just unmute Jack. <laughs> I just want to hear what Jack has to say. All right. You're unmuted, Jack. I mean, what the fuck? What just happened? <laughs> is this room push to talk? If that is probably why he's not talking. Oh no, the room is basically set up so that everyone's muted by default. Because uh, this is like a formal debate VC. So only those who are, you know, participating can uh, uh, speak. So either a debate moderator or an admin has to unserver mute those who wish to uh, participate further in the discussion. So I unmuted Jack for you. Gotcha, I, Jack. I, I predicted that, that you could go for 20 minutes before you drew a answer in the last. I mean, I don't. Do you understand what he was trying to get at there? Well, they want to say that. Um, I think the the basic idea is they want to say that um, it's not informative to say you lack a belief one way or the other because a lack of belief is something that applies to rock, right? When you, when you say it's not informative. I mean, I don't understand. You think that no information is conveyed when I say that I lack a belief? Is that what he's trying to say? Well, I mean, ultimately, I think what he's trying to do is get you to offer some kind of a position. He's trying to get you to take some kind of stronger stand, which will then force you to defend. That's what the whole, this whole stick that you see among Christian apologists on YouTube about how atheists have redefined atheism to include mere lack of a belief as a positive disbelief in the system um, is a way of them... Brian, your mechanical keyboard is louder than Jack's voice. Sorry, please continue. It's a way for... It, what they like to say is that's a way for atheists not to have to defend their position. But see, he didn't say, he didn't even say something like that, because I figured he was maybe getting at something like that. Like, maybe he was going to try to say something like, you know, um, you're not, you're not answering, like, the kind of thing I want to know about your position, or, like, you're not being truthful about your, like, I wasn't sure. I thought maybe he was trying to say something like that, but I, I didn't get it. He's just... Like, I, didn't, I don't understand what the... Like, was he trying to actually say that I'm wrong about something, or...? Well, I mean, he didn't get there, but I assume that was where he was going. Holy, can you mute your mic? You're, uh, you're popping off like crazy. Um, uh, no, I think he wanted okay. to say something. Oh, wait, sorry, were you trying to say something? If you were trying to no, say something, my bad. To somebody, I was talking to somebody in real life. Oh, okay. Oh, sorry. Yeah, yeah, that was really weird, because... <sighs> I, like, I asked him right off the bat if he holds the kind of view that um, Darth or Jay hold, where agnosticism is impossible. And he said it's not impossible. And then, what happened from there? Uh, oh, I was going to change the topic, but he seemed to want to ask me about agnosticism. I was going to change it over to, okay, well, let's talk about whether God exists. <clears throat> but, yeah, he seemed to just want to say, like, like what he asked me what I take agnostic to mean... I said, I take it to mean I don't have a belief that P is true or that P is false. Um, in this case, P is God exists. And 
yeah, I guess I just don't understand what he was trying to do from there. I don't understand if he was trying to say that I'm I wrong. Don't, I don't, I don't get it. There's anything really to understand. I mean, he's an idiot. But, I mean, the key <laughs> point is the key okay. point is that um, the best part, really, was when you said, what does it mean for a de definition to be insufficient? And he just simply dodged the question. <laughs> well, yeah, that is kind of weird because it's a, it's a weird... Like, people make these kind of like category mistakes i almost want to call them where they say like that definition is false or something like this like well the definition is not a proposition it can't even have it can't even have a property like truth or falsity like what do you even think you're saying so i was i was just trying to understand what the criticism a bit like i don't even know what to say about it it's just like i was trying to understand what this aversion or criticism or whatever going on with the definition was but it just couldn't be understood but yeah, I'm I'm very I, I I'm sensitive to those kind of things. I mean, I um when someone when someone says like definition is insufficient. So like there's a few things. Like I I try to be sensitive to category errors like when someone says like definition false or like noun false or like something like that. It's like wait, what those those kind of things can't have properties like truth or falsity or like argument true. It's like arguments don't have properties like truth. Arguments have like validity or soundness. Um but there's also uh, with this like normative language, I'm kind of sensitive to that stuff too, where someone says like insufficient or something like this. It's like, well, insufficient for what, right? That's, that's like a word that it has to have like that, like relational counterpart yeah. or whatever. It's hard to understand what it means. Yeah. It's insufficient. Yeah. It's not insufficient for some means. It's just insufficient. In some absolute sense. Um, but you see, what you have to understand is he's an extreme, you know, he's not just a moron. He's an extremely dishonest individual. And the point of doing that, right, he said, I mean, it was just a debating tactic, right? He said the definition is insufficient. And then you asked him, what does that mean? He dodged the question and said, look, if you don't understand this, there's no need for us to continue, right? Which is like putting you on the defensive. Right. He's like, the whole point is to say, well, look, I, what I'm saying is so simple and straightforward. Yeah, exactly. And you're right. just too stupid to understand this. <laughs> and he doesn't have to defend that because then if you don't understand it, he can then just say, well, OK, so I tried again. You didn't get it. So there's no point in continuing. Right. And that makes him the victor. Right. Right. I think I think you've I got mean, a good analysis there. A more, there just couldn't be a more dishonest person than Matt Swift. I mean, he is just. The absolute worst. Up well, there with Darth. Well, what about Darth? <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, they run a race. I mean, I don't. Yeah. Right. So it wasn't actually, you, you know. Well, <laughs> okay. Sorry. I was, I was going to try to somehow make a joke about you fucking up a, a true dichotomy there, but I couldn't think of how to make it work. It's like one of them has to be <laughs> the most dishonest person in existence. Um. Uh, probably a thought. <laughs> Um, yeah, and I I now can't remember verbatim what he said, but I think that he said something about my motives too, didn't he? Didn't he say I was being like, like I forget what word he did. He well, said you were playing thing. games with him. Yeah, yeah playing games. He accused you. That's another stick that he has, right? In order to get out of a losing situation, is to complain about being overtalked. Accused you of like rudeness or. You know disrespecting him or whatever and then using that as an excuse to leave well he put this is a person who over talks people routinely right so it's just it's just so clear that that's just just a ludicrous tactic well he put me in a position where where i had to over talk because okay so this is kind of what goes through my head jack when i'm when I hear one of these guys about to launch into their spiel or whatever, it's like, I try to be patient. I understand they might like flee the conversation or something like that. So, you know, I'm going to sit there and listen through it. But when they preempt their spiel by going, I'm going to try one more time. And I know that my response is going to be the same thing. It's like, okay, well now I have to say something. It's like, if I let him go, then he just goes through the spiel. I raise the same problem. And then he just like says, Oh, you don't get it and runs away. So it's like, that kind of forces me to try to say something to preempt that. You know what I mean? It's like, I'd be respectful. And if he was, if I knew he was just going to spiel at me like 50 times in a row, I'd be like, okay, well, you know, I'll like sit through it, whatever. I'll, I'll put up with that. But when you don't need to justify yeah. yourself, 
it's just a tactic. I don't think I'm justifying myself. I'm just explaining no, but what what goes I through my head. Yeah. No, I understand. I understand why you interrupted him. Any sane, rational person would understand why you interrupted him, right? He just pulls that stick as a way to leave uh, a situation where he knows he's going to lose. I mean, maybe take the high ground and say, "Oh well, you, know, you disrespected me, so you're really not interested in having this conversation. So I can go elsewhere, right?" That's that he, that's the closest okay, thing. Okay, yeah. To well, Meslik told you to in the very beginning what he was looking for from you. Yeah. What? See, now this dumbass here. Oh, I've just encountered him, this dumbass. <laughs> yeah, just ask this idiot what is what an insufficient definition is. Well, I mean, because yeah, he was asking you, he was asking you, ask yourself. Um, he wanted to know idiot. the reasoning behind your lack of belief. What's an insufficient definition, dumbass? Yeah, all you said was Shut that up, you did not have What's a lack of belief. So he was asking you dumbass. what your reasoning was for What's having the lack of belief. That's what he was trying to get dumbass. from you. What's an insufficient definition, dumbass? Um, I actually, I mean, we could we could do this, but he's just going to dodge your question. He also actually dodged me repeatedly the other day. He was trying to say that agnosticism is impossible, and he actually fled me. So did you want to, uh, you want to have that discussion now, Catholic traditionalist? I was trying to communicate to you before you ran away last time. Remember, we were talking about the Higgs boson, and I was pointing out how before the physicists actually found it, right, there's a lot of people who just didn't have an opinion one way or the other. They didn't believe it exists. They didn't believe it didn't exist, right? It's not like everyone believed that it didn't exist until it showed up. Do you accept that? Uh, sure, sure, absolutely. Okay, so why can't someone, what, what's the contradiction that's entailed by someone being agnostic about God? Well, because there's plenty of evidence for God right in front of you. Therefore, you cannot hold a neutral position. Do you think that your answer there actually came in the form of a contradiction? No. Well, okay. like, for example, do you believe that logic itself is only a conceptualization of the mind? Okay, we have to take a step back from the bait, and we have to look at what's happening. I'm trying to ask you to actually spell out the contradiction, and you're trying to ask me questions, right? If you're aware of the contradiction, you don't need to ask me anything. Just wanna, tell me. Okay, if you don't want to have a conversation with me, that's fine, just like you didn't want to have a no, conversation with no, Matt. No, one second. I would be willing to talk to you if it didn't immediately start with you yeah, dodging. answer my question. Right? <laughs> you're dodging you, my you, question. So you, answer my you, question. An, you answer mine. I'm happy to answer yours after. Okay, I, I already answer. I already answer you by saying you, no, and now I okay, pose the question wait, to you, wait, and I'm well, waiting one, your answer. One, one sec. Let me complete the line of reasoning, and so then I'll when, let you so complete when, yours. So when no, you've already okay. asked one, me a question. One, no, 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 we're not. We're not. One second. One, one second. We're not doing back so and forth. Now I'm wait. Okay, stop. Then, then wait. We're not. We're not going. Okay. He fled. And see, you just said you'd answer him, though. Yeah, I'm happy to. But the thing is, I think he misunderstood me and thought that I was saying that we go back and forth. I ask a question, you ask a question, but that's a very uh, like frazzled, maybe that's not the best word, but it's a very like disorienting way to talk. What's better is to take turns running a series of questions. So like I get to run my series of questions on you and then you get to run your series of questions on me. And maybe I'd have even let him go first. If someone wants to tell him he can go first, as long as he promises to actually endure, you know, a series of questions and not just like, you know, one question, then try to try to take over, then I'll uh, I'll do that too. But, well, I don't think people usually have scripts in front of them. I don't understand what you're saying. What What do you What? Okay. Well. Yeah, never mind then. Maybe he's saying like, sorry. Maybe he's saying that they don't, they won't remember the line of inquiry after the other person. No, came. no, I. It oh, was okay. a joke. It, it got lost. Yeah, don't worry about it. Okay, I'm not. I don't think I care enough to try to get it. But oh, yo, Bruce, Bruce in here. What up, dude? Um, yeah. Well, Jack, I guess before I go, I just I want to just talk a tiny bit more about that interaction with Matt because that was that was just like a surreal experience for me. Maybe from your perspective, it was like totally predictable or whatever. But that's just total stick. But I I told Void immediately before you went in there that I thought you could probably draw it out to twenty minutes. You know. Did we even get a answer? He was skeptical. 
<laughs> he's like <laughs> that long before he throws his tantrum. You know, I don't think he made two minutes. I know I don't. I mean, I have it recorded, so we'll we'll <laughs> time well, it later. I guess by, three I was departures off by a in a row. Of 10. <laughs> yeah, I mean, <laughs> you really fucked up. <laughs> That, um, that was literally like three departures in a row what the hell's going I mean, on I, I guess maybe I should take it as like a compliment like in the same way as like a normal intellectually honest person if they think you're good hey, at de debating will just like say hey good, nice debating bro like a really intellectually dishonest person the compliment is how quickly they flee hey, I think well, tasteless hey, opinion wanted to yeah. yeah tasteless uh, wanted to ask oh, you a question so Lord. I needed him <laughs> okay what up tasteless hey what up son how are you? I, I just wanna. Yeah, I just mano. have a question for you. Yeah. Mano, ¿qué tal? ¿Qué pasó, yeah, mano. Mano? <laughs> um, so ask yourself. I, I just, you know, I, I was, you know, just wondering, you know, why are you still holding to the name the trade argument to be a good argument? This is my question. Yeah, I don't see what's wrong with it. Oh. What do you mean? You don't see the, the problem with your argument? No. Do you think it's unsound? Holy sh no, 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 no. It is, it is total garbage. Are you saying it's unsound? I am saying it begs the question. I'm asking if it's unsound. So I am saying it begs the question. Okay, try one more time. Is it unsound? Well, if it begs the question, then yeah. You think a question begging argument is unsound? Yeah. Wait, but a question-begging argument could have a true premise and a true conclusion and be valid. <laughs> no, 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 no. You asked me for it to be sound, not valid, right? Soundness requires validity. Mm, you can't... No, I'm, I'm saying no. it's not sound. You told sorry, me it's sorry. valid. <laughs> well, something no. being valid doesn't <laughs> mean it is sound. I, do you think that something being sound means that it's valid? I am saying that if something is not sound and you telling me that it is valid it doesn't um, make it sound I, just because it is valid I, right? I didn't i don't think i even mentioned validity but just just answer this do you you, you asked me hey do you think it's sound i said no yes that's you why i asked me. if it's sound you, but how and i said well it, it begs the question you say and well, i pointed out a but, question um, wait let me say this is it sound I wait, no wait, it is not taste, sound. tasteless tasteless said, but one, it is valid. one second taste and i said so what <laughs> no, i didn't no you're sound. you're 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 not following i didn't just say it's valid i said it's it, you can have a question begging argument that is valid and has true premises which is what it is for an argument right. to be sound no 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 so the premises or the <laughs> oh, no. can be true based on the on the, on the oh inference. why did i do this however the inference itself it's not sound it's not true therefore <laughs> rendering a valid a valid fucking argument without it being sound right do you think that a question begging argument is necessarily unsound um yeah i think so <laughs> so you don't think it's possible to have a sound argument of the form p well, therefore p? maybe not <laughs> In your particular, no. In your particular, begging the question in your particular makes it necessarily unsound. Yes. Oh, <laughs> but but let me tell you why. Let me tell you why. <laughs> wait, but what about what about the art? What wait? But what? No, it's not irrelevant. It's a counterexample to the universally totally quantified irrelevant. statement you so, just made about arguments. Saying? No, tasteless. Okay, one second. You you no, 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 wait. No, no, no. You just made what a universally quantified statement about arguments, right? You so said if an argument. You said if an argument begs the question, it's not sound. Do you think the no, argument P that's therefore? That's not what okay, so you that's agree. Strong. So you agree that you can have a question begging argument that is sound. I said not in your. Just, argument. just answer the question, dude. Do you think it you can have? Matter. You, can, wait, are wait, you are you are you unable wait. to answer tasteless answer the question can you have I, I a question begging art okay i i i one second let's case. oh my dear you lord say, i'm just gonna put oh, a mute on other cases he... okay sorry i had to had to put a mute on him jack i wanted to Hello? ask you did you oh. also catch that statement in there oh. where tasteless was saying that a question begging argument is unsound or am i just hearing things i i didn't catch that i i was asking um, uh, i was asking jack if he caught it i thought that's what he said that's what i thought i heard too did because the thing is i don't have perfect memory like the record will show i guess because i'm recording but 
So what I was saying there is just if you're giving a if you're saying that a question begging argument is necessarily unsound, then that seems false. Because what about the argument P therefore P? That's just a straightforward counterexample. Um, anyway, okay. Well, I think I'm is, going to... Did you mute him or something? Oh, yeah, I stopped listening to Tasteless like a minute ago. Um, all right. All right. Uh, well, what was the initial discussion? I just wanted to hop in real quick, because it's been a while since I talked to you. It's good to hear you again. Oh, yeah, no, nice to talk to you, too. Um, yeah, the initial conversation was... So, well, it's been through, like, five phases now. It's like, I came here to listen to Jack, because I thought Jack was debating Matt Slick. Then they baited me into debating Matt Slick. Then Matt Slick ran away. And then Catholic traditionalist ran away oh, and then so tasteless it's... came in and asked some questions so and then made yeah and then faith or god the existence of god is that the idea yeah well tasteless was taking it over to veganism um he Ooh. seemed he seemed to want to criticize name the trait um but well I w he, yeah, okay. he, I mean... he invoked some weird shit in there about um question begging arguments being unsound so i was trying to kind of like fight him on that but he was he was trying to just do the over talk thing so i just i just muted him and gave up right okay yeah what's the um well i mean we can we can go back to i was just was gonna make an argument with you if, if you're at all interested on um theism or okay i'll God, i'll do but... I'll, I'll quickly do the theism thing with you but i know i don't know if he's still in here is Bryn still in here yeah he is i okay i should one sec just let me look at my dms from Bryn because i know he's helping me out <laughs> i sort okay you're you're on vc i don't <laughs> sorry no, don't, I... don't worry i'm free the rest of the night so oh, take okay. whatever time you think that you have and then we'll Whatever okay. time you want to spend on that. I'm, I'll just be chilling in here, so no worries. Bryn's helping me program a keyboard, and we've been playing phone tag. So, oh, that's okay. cool. It's fun. I, I programmed a TNC myself. It's fun. Yeah, so basically I'm setting it up for, like, Dvorak, but I'm also putting, like, yeah. I want to have other modes on it so I can flip it over so that I have all the yeah. Gre Greek characters and all the logic characters and all the, like, set theory characters and stuff. But, yeah, sorry, Bruce. I'll, I'll, have, I'll have the theism talk with you, and then, uh, then well, I'm going sure, to go to Bryn. Yeah, what's up? Yeah, I'm I'm just a lay person, but I mean, what is your uh, what is your what is your problem with? Well, I guess the question I have more is how do you come to your to your thoughts or your unification among classes or any other ways to have intelligible logic? How do you come to that? When you say how do I come to my thoughts, are you talking like like causally? Yeah, like what is the genesis of your of your thought? <laughs> I mean, how would I possibly know that? That's, I mean, maybe something in my brain, something like stretching back to the Big Bang, some big series of events, something like that. I don't fucking know. Well, yeah, that's my point, though. It's like that's the argument for God in my case. I mean, that's not an argument, though. What? What do you? Wait, sorry, I'm lost, Bruce. What's, well, the, arg what's the, the argument? argument is the argument is there. The, the argument is there must be some unifier that has unified our all classes so that we have order. And so it, you either have to trust your senses to tell you that you uh, you know what you're saying is correct, which we know that your senses are not, um, you know, uh, very trustworthy. So there has to be a unifier, and that unifier is God. I'm not sure I follow exactly what the argument is. Is it what is the basic idea? Like I don't want to straw man it, but is it like if you can trust your senses, then God exists. You can trust your senses, therefore God exists. No, you cannot trust your senses alone, is what I'm saying. You must have some ultimate. So is it like, you can't trust your senses if God doesn't exist? Okay, sorry. If you can't trust your senses, then God doesn't... Uh, I'm trying to think of how to set this up. If God doesn't exist, then you can't trust your senses. You can trust your senses, therefore God exists. Is that the idea? Uh, uh, you can... So you cannot trust your senses without at all. You, in order for you to make sense of something, you are, whenever you operate using logic, you are presupposing the existence of some unifier, which would, in my case, I would say is God. Okay, so the thing that I'm trying to do, Bruce, is you're kind of giving me like like just statements, right? And I'm, I'm not trying not trying to be rude. I you know I like you. I think you. Uh, do you want me to do it approach like a claim? Now. I guess. Well, it's not no, because you're you're making claims. The what I want is an inference. Do you understand the distinction between like a claim and an inference? 
I mean, I think I do, but... So, like, me I, me. I, mean, I mean, I'm mean, i sure you know what a claim is, obviously. So, like, an inference is going to be it's a move from some claim to some other claim, and it's if it's a valid inference, it's via some kind of rule. So I was taking what I thought your inference was and trying to put it in a formal structure where it's valid. So, like... Modus tollens is one of those fa uh, one of those um, structures where you go if p then q not q therefore not p. So I tried to put your argument in that form, right? Um, if uh, your senses aren't reliable, sorry, if God doesn't exist, you know, so p uh, then uh, your senses aren't reliable, but your senses are reliable, therefore God exists. That's just, uh, that's modus tollens. That would be valid. And then I'd be able to look at those two premises, like your senses are reliable, or uh, if God doesn't exist, then your senses aren't reliable. And then I'd be able to talk about where I disagree. But when we don't even clarify what the inference is, then it's, it's very hard for me to know what to say to what you're saying. Okay, sure. So, I mean, inference implies evidence, correct? Um, it probably depends how we construe evidence because you might be able to have an inference about some like a priori stuff and I don't know if that's going to qualify as like evidence so it probably depends what you well, mean by evidence the question, then. well I mean the, the evidence is how you're operating no, Bruce, it's hard to it's hard to debate you about this cuz we're we're like not try, we're not operating in like the same way. Like I'm trying to under like let me put it this way. Would you be so another way to talk about an inference is like well, you, you could argue there's a slight difference in these concepts, but like what's the argument? That's that's one way for me to put it. What's the argument you're trying to use? Oh, the argument is that in order to have any sort of intelligible uh, thought, you must have some unifier well, that unifier, in my case, is revealed as God. So, if you can have intelligible thought, then there's a unifier. Um, mm -hmm. If there's a unifier, then that unifier is God. You can have intelligible thought, therefore, that unifier is God. So, like, is that the idea? Sure, I, I, we can go with that. I'll go with that. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, so good. I guess that I guess that there's like two stages. Uh, that I would like push back in there so maybe I should just pick one but I'll just say what they both are so the first is like this whole idea of a unifier I don't even know what the fuck exactly that's supposed to mean or why it would be necessary for intelligible thought so I'd need to well see uh, the... I, mean, I would ask you I would ask you a question. how do you then what... distinguish between between objects at all how do you make well, distinctions between wait, objects. Wait, but there's a fundamental problem here, right? Like, it doesn't matter what my account is. I, I don't even say I just don't have an account for how we make differentiations between, like, objects or something like this. You're the one who made the claim that intelligible thought is only possible if there's a, quote, unifier, whatever exactly that is. And I'll just say one other thing. I don't want to gish gallop you. We, we can just mm -hmm. talk, we'll talk about that one. But the other one would just be, say we, like, for whatever reason, grant the unifier thing. Then you'd have to somehow show that the only kind of thing that can have those unifying properties or whatever, the only thing that can be the unifier is God. But we can focus on the first one because I don't want to gish gallop you. So, yeah, why, why, what's the argument that you can't have intelligible thought without a, quote, unifier? Because every time you make any sort of a claim or judgment, you must have then uh, presupposed the higher order of that claim. So in order for something to become distinguished, it must have some characteristics that you're claiming distinguish it from something else. And so you you would then have to un, you would then have to admit that something has created these characteristics for you. It, at that layer, you'd have to say, well, something has created these characteristics that I'm defining. Wait. So... Otherwise, otherwise, you'd you could never prove you could never prove that you're actually uh, having um, intelligible intelligible interactions with other people because there would be no unification between you maybe there's a bit of a confusion about what even the term unifier means what does that term mean well it, like i said in order to in order to create distinctions among objects thoughts or anything else in the material world there has to be something that was the genesis of the outcome so how do you then 
distinguish between objects at all. But wait, but having you, some unifying class. I mean, you could talk but, about it in like other wait, more materialistic. You, do, don't you see the problem? There's a problem about how this dialectic is going. Like, because somehow I just tried to understand the definition of a unifier, and it turned into some question for me about I don't even remember what it was about. But I'm just asking, what's the so? The bigger picture is I'm trying to understand why the first premise is true, that if we have intelligible thought, then there's a unifier. But I'm going, okay, before even examining that premise, I'm just confused about what that word even means. What's unifier supposed to be? So I'm just looking for a definition. So asking me like a question, it's not helping me with the thing I need to understand what you're saying. Like I need to know what a unifier is supposed to mean. What it, okay, that, so but it would be better to define unifier in this case. That'd be helpful um, for sure. Uh, I would say um, we're trying to um, uh, okay. something that something that brings things together coherently, or at least understandably so. So but something now... that uh, brings things together to make coherent something whole something that makes things coherent so it's almost like is could are we just saying unifier is the thing that makes things intelligible right but then the first premise is just in order to have intelligible thoughts there has to be something that makes thoughts intelligible mm-hmm Okay. Yes, well, I would agree with I, that. I would agree with that. Okay. I mean, I can I can agree with that. Like, for, I'm sure there's some thing that explains why thoughts are intelligible. But now we're gonna go to the second premise. Then, so I'll grant the first one. If unifier doesn't have any weird, spooky, metaphysical shit about it, and all it refers to is just whatever the thing may be that accounts for why thoughts are intelligible. I mean, I I don't I don't think thoughts are just some like brute thing. So presumably there's some kind of explanation. So sure, let's just grant it. So. What about the second premise, though? Why would I think that the thing that makes thoughts intelligible has to be God? Why is... Do you take the view that God is the only thing that can do it? Yes, I do. Okay, and by the only... The creator. Are we saying... Please, no, I'm just going to warn you. This is this is like the classic trap that precept people fall into right here. But So mm -hmm. fa fa fair warning, right? Are you, are you trying to say that... Um, it would be impossible for anything else to um, to uh, qu quote unify than God. You you mean it would be impossible for anything else to to do the work that God has done in my well, 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 no, just think. So not not the the work that God has done refers to some whole shit ton of stuff, right? Like right. we just said, if there's intelligible thought, then there's a unifier, and a unifier is just whatever explains why there's intelligible thought. So I'm asking you, do you think it's impossible that anything other than God explains why there's intelligible thought? Oh, uh, do I think that anything other than God explains why there's intelligible no, thought? Not quite. I'm not asking if you think anything other than God does it. Obviously, you think God really? does it. I'm asking if you mm -hmm. think it's, it would be impossible for something other than God to do it. Um, no. Well, hang on a second. The okay. problem is we're we're dealing with something tangible versus metaphysical, I guess. But I would say it is impossible for anyone else to have done that. So yes, it is impossible. Okay, and, and, but anyone specified that whatever does it has to be a person. You would agree it's impossible for anything, right? That includes people and non-people. That just is everything else. You would agree that it's impossible for anything other than God to uh, unify. That is to to account for why thoughts are intelligible uh sure i'll say i'll say yes okay so you have fallen into the pre-sup death trap which is now you have to actually show what contradiction is entailed by the statement something other than god accounts for why thoughts are intelligible what is well explain to me the contradiction as you see it no, I, I, I'm not convinced there is a contradiction. You claimed it's impossible, so it's on you to show that there's a contradiction. This is why it's like the precept well, I see, I see. death so trap. Why, yeah. why, is there a, what, why is there a contradiction there? I guess. No, I'm not even asking why. I'm asking what the contradiction is even supposed to be. I don't, I don't know. I guess I don't understand initially. I mean, I'm, I'm a layperson, so this isn't something that I do regularly. Well, 
Yeah, um, that's what, okay. What is the contradiction that you're seeing that I need to account for here? Is well, no, I, that... so, so wait, uh, there's a confusion. I'm not saying that there is a contradiction. So mm. you said that it's impossible for anything other than God to unify. Okay, and when I say unify, I'm just use all I mean by that is what I think you mean, which is just account uh -huh. for why thoughts are intelligible. So it's impossible for anything other than God to account for why thoughts are intelligible. So when you say it's impossible, I take that to be referring to logical impossibility, right? And that means it would be a contradiction if anything else than God accounted for um, why thoughts are intelligible. So when I hear a claim like that, I go, well, why the fuck would I believe something like that? Like you, if you are making a claim like that, you must presumably be aware of some contradiction that's entailed by the statement, anything other than God explaining why thoughts are intelligible. Uh, sorry, you must be aware of some contradiction that's entailed by a statement, something other than God accounts for why thoughts are intelligible, right? Or else you shouldn't say it's impossible. Um, I don't know that I really truly understand the, the issue other well, than I think you, you saying to yeah. me that there's an impossibility that's no, if you, I, if I'm making you, no, Bruce, you said all, there's yeah, an impossibility. Yeah, I didn't say any impossible yeah, yeah. shit. That was it's, you. So it's, it's impossible that somebody else could possibly, because he is the creator, right? The, the, for, there has to be one single origin, so nobody else could possibly also fit that origin. Okay, well, when you say nobody, that, that almost like... Nobody or no other thing either. Right, exactly. Nothing, yes. else, could fit, could nothing so, else could fit the origin because the origin is, is explicitly that. So it's, it's important to be sensitive to when you're using the language of like possibility and necessity and stuff. When you say nothing else could do it, it's impossible, right? I just take that to mean that there is a contradiction that's entailed by the statement that something other than God accounts for why language is intelligible, or sorry, thoughts are intelligible. So why well, I don't I don't if, distinguish the contradiction there at all because there there could not be two origins there cannot be two base classes for one there there cannot be two base classes for the ultimate class the the ultimate class or the first iteration there has to be the first actor or the first move but that wait, can only be done by one person but but, one we're, thing. but now we're talking about the the cause of the universe essentially we're just talking about what accounts for why thoughts are intelligible right and you're saying it's yes. impossible for anything other than god to do that but what's the contradiction that's entailed by the statement something other than god accounts for why thoughts are intelligible i i don't i guess i can't really answer that then you shouldn't say it's impossible I well i mean I, I guess we're just not i'm not following in that case so, but I mean, I, I don't quite understand how you can have two Genesis, two zeros. Well, that that's that's going over to some whole other point about the start of the universe, and I'm I'm happy to talk about that sometime. But I, right now, I think I am going to go do this stuff with Bryn. But I'll let you have the last word. Um, but what I'm saying is just you should be really sensitive to when you use words like could or possible or impossible. Because when you make, when you use those words, and this is something precepts do all the time, and they don't understand the burden that they're settling themselves with. And I'm not, I'm not trying to give you shit for it. You said you don't fucking spend a bunch of time with this stuff, so it's totally understandable. But when you use those kind of words, when you say it's not possible, this is the only thing, the way, the only way it could happen, right? This kind of language, it's like, well, unless you, Bruce, can actually spell out some logical contradiction that's entailed by the thing you're saying is impossible, right? then it just there's no reason to think it's impossible what it means to say it's impossible is that there's some kind of logical problem with it right so just all i'm saying is if you use words like you know possible could impossible be sensitive to when you're saddling yourself with the burden of proof to show a contradiction because then if you can't do it then you just end up in this position where it's like oh it's impossible for anything other than god to account for why thoughts are intelligible okay well what's the contradiction entailed by the statement something other than god accounts for why thoughts are intelligible i don't know right you can have the last uh, word though. okay i mean it, I, yeah that's fine and i, I guess my, my um my understanding of, of of that is it's a priori or it's uh self-evident so that's that's how i approach it but you know you give me a lot to 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 consider and also uh to, to look into myself as far as uh that contradiction is concerned it's not something i've been told to look at before so that's why i do these sorts of things yeah of course and i mean i hope you don't think i'm running away you can always come catch me in the server and we can uh we can talk more
Yeah, I don't think so. That's fine. Yeah, okay. Have a good night. All right. Yeah, you have a good one too. Peace out.